Hello, and welcome to Zenus Video Guide. I think you're going to enjoy our program. It's designed to give you quickly and simply all the information you'll need to help you get the maximum pleasure from your new VCR. To start, note the color-coded chapters on the back of the cassette sleeve. Each chapter has its own color, and that same color also appears as a color bar across the bottom of your screen to help you quickly find a specific chapter for later review. As you start viewing each chapter, the color bar will slowly disappear until at the end of that chapter, it's entirely gone. How much of the color bar shows will tell you where you are within a chapter. Now, this video program will show you how to operate your VCR, but it isn't meant to replace this printed operating guide. So we recommend that you take the time to read it. You'll find additional information in the printed guide that's not included in this video program. One other quick point. This video guide is meant to be used with several VCR models. While functions among the various models are virtually identical, where there are differences, we'll indicate them. Well, that's it for the preliminaries. Let's get started. <laughs> Before we get started, notice the clock. It's flashing because the time needs to be set. We'll do that a little later, but for now, let's at least stop it from flashing. Move this switch to the center or clock adjust position momentarily, and then move it back to the clock position. Your new Zenith VCR has an automatic power on system. Simply loading the cassette automatically turns on the deck. Now. I'll just turn it off for a minute and show you a helpful feature. If you want to get the cassette out quickly, you don't have to power up the deck. Simply press the eject button, and just like that, out comes the cassette. Your VCR's primary controls are located here on this front panel. Behind this panel door, we have the secondary control group. We'll take a detailed look at these shortly, but for now, the knob should be centered, and all switches should be set to the left. On the back are the antenna connections, the channel output selector switch, and the audio and video input output jacks. Well, so far so good. Now let's find out more about cassette playback. For cassette playback, you can operate your VCR in several ways, manually with the controls on the front of the machine, or at a distance with this convenient, full-function remote control. If you use the remote, be sure this switch is in the VCR position. In the TV position, this remote will operate many remote-controllable Zenith TVs. Your Zenith VCR also has a nifty feature called autoplay to let you play back a cassette automatically. Here's how it works. A special circuit inside the cassette deck can sense the presence or absence of this cassette safety tab. Removing the tab prevents accidental re-recording of pre-recorded tapes. Anyway, if you insert a cassette that doesn't have the safety tab, the deck will automatically go into the play mode and start playing the cassette. Okay, to view a cassette, turn on your TV set and tune it to channel 3 or 4, whichever is the unused broadcast channel in your area. In this case, channel 3. Then, on the back of your VCR, set the RF output switch to match the TV channel you've selected. Once you've set this switch, you never have to set it again. And from now on, this switch position will determine which channel, 3 or 4, you tune your TV to when using the VCR. Now, why don't you sit back, relax, and use the remote control? And if you do, be sure the VCR TV switch is in the VCR position. The tape TV button on the remote has the same function as this tape TV button on the VCR. When the light is on, that means you can view a picture from a cassette or from broadcast TV using the VCR's tuner. 
When it's off, that means you must use your TV's tuner to select channels and to view a picture independent of the VCR. If you don't get a picture and your TV screen looks like this, just press the Tape TV button once and you should get a picture immediately. The remote control can perform virtually any function on the VCR. It'll do all the playback operations, including speed search forward, speed search reverse, and stop. You can also use the remote control to freeze picture action. Simply press pause. By holding the pause button down, you can advance the picture continuously. To resume regular playback, press play. Normal picture and sound will return. Still picture and picture advance can also be controlled on the cassette deck by pressing the pause button. By the way, if this program seems to be going by too fast, press the pause button and rewind the tape a little, and then view the tape again. <laughs> and then view the tape again. Speaking of rewind and play, your new VCR has a feature called Play Memory for repeat viewing of programs. Just press the rewind and then the play button almost simultaneously. The flashing play indicator means the cassette will rewind to the beginning, stop, and begin playing back automatically. If during playback your picture looks distorted or if the audio sounds strange or is missing, turn the tracking control to clear it up. Here's a feature you may find useful. During tape playback, you can automatically search for and find a specific point on the tape. Here's how. When you see a point that you want to return to later, press pause. Press clock lap counter once to display the tape counter number, and then press reset. The counter will return to zero. Press play, continue playing the tape just as you would ordinarily. Later, when you want to return to the previous point, set this switch to on. Press stop, then press rewind. The tape will rewind to zero, the point where you press the reset button. Now you're ready for tape playback. Pressing clock lap counter twice restores the clock display. Well, that about wraps up this chapter. Coming up next, important information about your TV picture. For full enjoyment of your VCR, you obviously need a picture. So, in this chapter, we're going to take a brief look at where your TV signal comes from. All of us are accustomed to changing channels on the TV and seeing the channel we selected come up on the screen. That's because your TV has a tuner built in. And it's this tuner that makes it possible for us to receive a TV signal from any available channel in our area. Now, to understand how this works, think of the TV signal as water flowing through a garden hose. The signal flows in here from the antenna and into the back of the TV. Then it flows out again as a picture. Your VCR also has a tuner built in, so in a way, it's like a TV set, only without the screen. And like the water in your garden hose, the signal flows in here into the back of the VCR then the signal flows out again directly into the TV. Since the VCR's tuner works independent of the tuner in the TV, you can change from the VCR's tuner to the TV's tuner or back again anytime you want. Having two independent tuners is why it's possible to record a program on one channel while watching a second program on a different channel. Your VCR can also receive signals directly from a cable TV system or from a special cable TV signal box like this. Now, 
one of the things all this means is since the VCR's tuner works independent of the TV set, we don't have to have the TV turned on to record a program. That's one of the great features of having a VCR. Now that we know a little bit about where signals can come from, let's go on to the next chapter and find out how to get the ones you want into your VCR. Well, as you can see from the last chapter, with all the TV signal possibilities to choose from, the way you hook everything up is very important. No matter where your signal comes from, sooner or later it has to go into the back of the VCR. If the end of your antenna cable is like this, screw it into this antenna input jack. Your VCR can now receive everything your TV set's been receiving. On the other hand, the end of your antenna cable may look like this. In that case, you'll need to use the antenna mixer which was packed in with your VCR. Attach the twin UHF-VHF antenna leads to it, like this. And then slip it on to the antenna end jack. The next step is to send signals from your VCR to your TV set. Attach this coaxial cable which came with your VCR to your VCR's antenna output jack and the other end to the TV's antenna input jack. Your VCR is now hooked up to your TV. Some TV sets have antenna terminals similar to this. If yours does, use the signal splitter that came with your VCR to attach the cable coming from the VCR to the TV, like this. Both your TV set and your VCR should now be able to receive normal broadcast TV signals. If your TV signal comes from a cable TV system, you most likely have a cable that looks like this. If so, simply screw it into this input jack. Your VCR's tuner is cable compatible, so you should now be able to tune all your previously available cable channels. However, Many cable TV systems use a special cable box to protect their signals. This complicates the hookup situation a little, but there are several options that you can select to suit your particular recording needs. Here's one example of how to hook up a cable box to your VCR. The cable signal coming into your home is first fed into the input of the cable box, and then fed out the output of the cable box and into the antenna input jack on the VCR. Then, the VCR output signal is fed to your TV. The advantage of this hookup option is you can record all available cable TV channels because you're using the cable box for tuning. The disadvantage is you can't use your VCR's tuner to make channel selections. Since all cable boxes allow only one TV channel at a time into your VCR. If your cable system protects only certain channels by scrambling the signal, there is another way to hook up your cable box. First, connect the cable TV system's antenna cable to the antenna end jack of your VCR. Next, connect one end of a coaxial cable to the antenna out jack of the VCR and connect the other end to the antenna end jack on the cable box. Then, connect the antenna out jack of the cable box to the antenna input on the TV. The advantage of this hookup option is you get to make most channel selections using the VCR's tuner. The disadvantage is you can view premium or so-called scrambled channels but you can't record them since unscrambling occurs after the signal has already passed through the VCR. What all this means is when using your VCR with a cable box, you may have to choose between the cable TV company's tuner or the tuner in the VCR. Well, you can relax now. Hooking up your VCR is probably the hardest thing for most people to deal with, and you just went through it. So, let's go on to chapter six. Well, now that we've got everything hooked up, 
Let's take a look at selecting channels. Your VCR's tuner can receive UHF and VHF broadcast channels. And if you're a cable subscriber, CATV channels too. To do that, we need to make sure that these switches are set to the right positions. In most cases, once you've done this, you probably won't need to reset them again. Okay, set the source select switch to the TV position. Next, for normal broadcast TV channels, set the band select switch to the TV position or to CATV for cable channels. For normal broadcast TV channels, set the automatic frequency control or AFC switch to normal. For cable channel viewing, set the AFC switch to special. If your TV has similar switches, set them to match those on your VCR. The AFC will automatically fine-tune the video signal. Now, make sure that this indicator light is on to be sure that you're using the VCR's tuner. To select a channel, simply press the channel scan arrow until the channel you want appears. Or, use your remote control to quickly find a specific channel by pressing the channel number. Here's how to quickly scan only your favorite channels. Set the channel set switch to on. Press one of the channel set arrows to select the channel you want to eliminate. Let's select five and press skip. You'll see PO flash briefly, telling you the channel has been programmed out of the scanning sequence. Then the channel number will start flashing to remind you the channel is no longer available. Finally, return the channel set switch to off. Now, when you use the scan controls, you'll see only the channels you really want. To restore channel 5 to the scanning sequence, simply move the channel set switch to on. Find the flashing channel 5. Press the add button and move the channel set switch to off. Channel 5 is now back in the scanning sequence. Well, that's how you tune in your channels. Now, let's find out more about how to record them. Before we get into the steps in recording, here's a handy reference chart of video cassette recording and playback time. It'll help you to choose the right length cassette for your recording. Your VCR will record both SP and EP tape lengths. The faster SP length will give you the best picture quality, and the slower EP speed provides the longest playing time. This number tells you the cassette in this box is 120 minutes, or two hours long, at the SP speed. At the EP speed, this cassette will be six hours long. Use the SPEP switch to manually select your recording speed. Okay, let's record a TV program. First, load a cassette and make sure that this safety tab is in place or that the hole is covered with a piece of tape. Select the recording speed and tune the channel to the channel you want. Or you can use the remote for channel selection. However, if you're using a cable TV box to select the channel, you'll have to tune the VCR to either channel 3 or 4, the output of most cable boxes. Now we're ready to record. Hold the record button and at the same time, press the play button. The red light on the record button and the green light on the play button tells you that the VCR is recording. Here are some helpful recording tips. Pressing the clock lap counter button will bring up the lap display that tells you the elapsed recording time in hours and minutes. And remember, if the tape reaches the end during manual recording, the VCR will automatically stop and rewind to the beginning. 
Here are some reminders to quickly check before you start recording. Let's try recording one channel while we watch a different one. We'll record this channel using the VCRs tuner, just as we did a moment ago. But now, we'll just press Tape TV so the light goes out. Then, you can watch whatever channel you select on the TV without affecting the channel your VCR is recording. But that's not the only way your new VCR can record. For example, this instant record button lets you start recording a program almost instantly. Here's how. Go through the normal steps to get ready for recording. Then, when you want to record, just select the channel and press this button twice. Recording begins immediately. Notice the clock display has changed and now tells us the VCR will record for 30 minutes. Each time the instant record button is pushed, we add another 30 minutes, up to a total of four hours. The recording time you've selected will count down to zero, and the power will switch off automatically. Pressing stop terminates instant record at any time. Well, that wraps up this chapter, so here comes chapter eight. This chapter is all about time, and for once, how to make time work for you. Your new VCR has a 14-day, four-event timer for automatic recording of up to four different programs on different channels at different times. The clock plays an important role in all of this, so let's adjust it to the correct time. Move this switch to the center clock adjust position and press the select button. When the day starts flashing, press the set plus or set minus button until today's day appears. Then press select again and the hour will flash. Press the set plus or set minus button until the correct hour, AM or PM appears. Press select again and the minutes will flash. Press set, and when the correct minutes appear, move the clock adjust switch back to the clock position. It's just like setting a digital watch. Whatever's flashing indicates the information you need to enter. Now, let's program the first event of the automatic timer. Okay, here we go. We use the same controls we just used to adjust the clock, except now we'll move this switch over to the program position. Notice number one flashes, indicating the first event is ready for programming. Press select. Whatever's flashing tells you the next step to program, in this case, day. Press either set button to choose the day you want. And then, when you push select again, it programs this step. Now program the time you want the recording to start, AM or PM, using the same set plus or set minus buttons. Notice that when you finish the last step in programming the start time, you automatically are ready to begin programming the stop time. To program the stop time, follow the same steps. For every start time entered, a stop time must also be entered. Finally, enter the channel number and press the select button to complete the programming for event number one. Now, the number one is flashing, and that tells you that you finished programming the first event. If you want to program additional record times, pressing the set plus button advances you through the four programming events available. Simply repeat these same programming steps for each different event. If you change your mind, or if you notice an error in any of the programmed information, just keep pressing the select button until the information you want to change flashes, and use the set buttons to change it. 
When you're all through setting the timer, move this switch back to the clock position to return to normal clock display. With the tape in the VCR, the last step is to turn on the timer by pressing the timer button. The VCR will turn off, ready to automatically record each program at the time and day you've set. These numbers tell you how many different events you actually programmed, up to a maximum of four events. Well, that's great, but suppose you want to record a show and it won't be on until next week. Here's how. When the day flashes, press this button until second Sunday appears. Then choose the day of that week. You can also program the VCR to record your favorite weekly series each week automatically. Simply enter the information about the show into the timer and press the repeat button. Every week, your VCR will remember to record the same program without having to reprogram the timer. To record your favorite daily series, just keep pressing the set buttons until every day of the week is displayed. Keep pressing to remove Sunday, then Saturday if desired. The rest of the steps for programming are the same as before. Once the timer is set, you can check the start and stop times entered for each event by moving the clock switch back to the program position. And then sequencing through each event to display the information. If you find an event that you don't want to keep, just press the cancel button. It's important to note that when the clock and timer are displayed together, normal VCR controls will not work. To make them work again, turn the timer off and press the power for normal operation. When the word timer is flashing, it means something's wrong, such as the cassette safety tab is missing. However, the timer will not flash for certain errors, so Here's a list of some other common programming errors to try to avoid. One final reminder. If the tape runs out during timer recording, the VCR will stop and automatically eject the cassette. That way, the automatic timer won't accidentally re-record over existing material on your cassette. For additional details about the auto-record timer, please consult your VCR's printed operating guide. Well, that about wraps up our show. We hope you found this video operating guide useful and enjoyable. If you'd like to tell us your reaction to this video guide, we'd like to hear from you. Please write to us at this address. Stars, larger than life, waiting to be captured by your home VCR. And the perfect sounds to capture are the sounds of the superstars in concert on HBO. Month after month, HBO brings home the great sounds of the great performers in concert, all simulcast in FM stereo, like this one. A major event featuring one of rock's superstars. Only one of many outstanding concerts heard in stereo on HBO.
Don't miss the great excitement of the great performers on HBO. Stars like Tina Turner, Bob Dylan, Whitney Houston, Phil Collins, all simulcast in FM stereo. For information about installing HBO in your home, call your local cable company.